Few events in Australia's political history have affected the nation as much as the loss in 1967 of a Prime Minister, Harold Holt, in the waters of Portsea in Victoria. Australians watched and waited as a massive search and rescue operation unfolded. The black and white TV images of that day and the weeks that followed will forever stay with those who watched the tragedy unfold. The controversy of the Prime Minister's disappearance would also have a profound effect on the political scene in the decade ahead. December the 17th, 1967, and Australia watched in shock and initial disbelief as news of the Prime Minister's disappearance in the surf off Portsea in Victoria spread across the nation. At 12 o'clock today, he went for a swim on the ocean side of the Portsea beach with a friend, Alan Stewart of Armadale. A few moments later, Alan Stewart realised that he could no longer see the Prime Minister and has then given the alarm. Rescuers trundled their way to the search scene from surrounding communities. Police and military divers deployed to Cheviot Beach by helicopter. Crowds silently lined the roadway. The rescue teams faced a futile task, but they persisted. Search coordinators believed there could be a chance the Prime Minister would be found alive on a beach somewhere some distance away. Uh, the Army is in charge of the whole operation. Uh, three helicopters have been called in. Um, lots of local boats have been employed. In Australians had never before been witness to such a sustained search for a missing person. In that era, Australians needed a government-issued licence to listen to radio or watch TV. The money raised by this licence financed the ABC. And on that December day and in the days ahead, the ABC used the money well, broadcasting continuously from Cheviot Beach, constantly updating progress in the search. Holt's private secretary, Tony Eggleton, became the face of the tragedy, facing the cameras time and time again, his features showing the increased strain as hopes for a rescue faded. An extensive search has been um, in operation since uh, approximately two o'clock today. Up until the present time, of course, we've found no trace of our Prime Minister. No, he certainly was not wearing flippers or wetsuit or anything of that kind. He was just going for a swim. There was only one person with the Prime Minister? There was only one person in the water with the Prime Minister. The tragedy came 692 days after Harold Holt had become Prime Minister, assuming the role on Australia Day 1966. Holt unashamedly backed his mentor Bob Menzies in supporting the United States and Australia's involvement in Vietnam. But I don't believe there are problems for one section of the Australian people. The problem of Australian security, for example, is not merely a problem for 70,000 young men. It's a problem for the whole of the Australian people. Everybody in this community will have to come into line in a spirit of self-sacrifice and of contribution if we are to have Australia safe and sound. In June 1966, he went to Washington and formed a close personal relationship with President Lyndon B. Johnson. You have in us not merely an understanding friend, but one staunch in the belief of the need for our presence with you in Vietnam we are not there because of our friendship. We are there because, like you, we believe it is right to be there. And so, sir, in uh, the lonelier and uh, perhaps uh, uh, even more disheartening moments which come to any national leader, I hope uh, there will be a corner of your mind and heart which takes cheer from the fact that you have an admiring friend, a staunch friend, that will be all the way with LBJ. That off-the-cuff remark to the President did not sit well at home. With an election looming and in an effort to bolster Holt's chances, LBJ responded in kind, becoming the first American President to visit Australia. November the 26th, Holt went to the polls for the election of both Houses of Parliament, facing a campaign remembered as the most tumultuous in 65 years since Federation. Noisy protesters demonstrated against the United States and the Vietnam War. One, two, three, four, make the commies stop the war! They are such true Democrats that they don't even want to hear what the democratically elected Prime Minister of their country has to say. 
At Rockdale in Sydney, Holt faced head-on a violent demonstration. Protesters yelled, drowned out his speech, leaving Holt sweating and lost for words. Outside, the demonstrators spat, punched and threatened the PM with physical violence. Ten days before polling day, New South Wales police uncovered a plot to assassinate the Prime Minister. Disgruntled Yugoslav immigrant Nadelko Gajic spent six days waiting at Parliament House for the chance to strike. He told police he intended to kill the head man in the hope of being deported to his homeland and that he had with him a 22 calibre rifle and 100 rounds of ammunition. After two jury trials ended without a verdict, prosecutors dropped the charges. His absence from Canberra on the hustings may have saved Harold Holt's life, but his landslide 41-seat majority win definitely saved the coalition government. Holt's election victory came against the odds, and despite the political security of a crowded backbench, he did face resentment and opposition within his party. And in the charged atmosphere of his disappearance, the mystery of his fate launched a surge of conflicting theories. Some thought he'd been abducted in a Chinese submarine, others murdered by a jealous husband or assassinated by a political foe. If you look at his situation, he was taking multiple medications from different practitioners, one in Victoria, another one in Canberra, um, and he was under immense pressure from all the intrigue within his party. In Washington, President Johnson shared the nation's shock on the loss of a man Johnson considered a personal friend. From the moment that the wire service teletypes in the White House had clattered out their messages about Prime Minister Holt, there was little doubt that the president's holiday plans would undergo drastic change. In less than 24 hours, an entourage of four jet planes, including Air Force One and 300 newsmen and aides had been assembled for the trip to Australia. To be met with a sombre greeting from acting Prime Minister John McEwen. By way of welcome to Canberra, Prime Minister Holt's interim successor, John McEwen, assured President Johnson that despite the change in leadership, there would be no change in Australia's commitment in South Vietnam. In Melbourne, Johnson joined world leaders for the farewell at St Paul's Cathedral, including the royal patronage of Prince Charles and colleagues and foes from both sides of the dispatch boxes. Outside the cathedral, crowds massed in mourning, as inside the congregation heard of Holt's achievements in life and politics. We are gathered here today to remember before Almighty God, our late Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Harold Edward Holt. We mourn today for a man who loved Australia, who lived for Australia, who gave his best for Australia. Despite being assured the passing of power to another Prime Minister would not impede Australia-US relations, Johnson remarked that it just won't be the same without Harold Holt. But history is going to reserve a very honoured place in its memory for the name and for the role of Harold Holt. At a critical time, it was he that saw the vision, and it was he that assumed the leadership, and it was he that imbued us all with a new spirit and with a fuller faith. In Canberra, President Johnson addressed Cabinet, comparing the death of Harold Holt with the assassination of President John F. Kennedy, as he completed an 18-hour round of talks and meetings with representatives of America's allies in the Vietnam War, before embarking on Air Force One for the flight back to Washington. The formal police investigation into the death of Harold Holt concluded accidentally drowned, that left many questions unanswered. Why did an experienced diver go into the water under such weather conditions? Had anyone else been implicated in his death? Did the police inquiry cover all bases? Not until 2005 did an inquest on the Prime Minister's death occur, with the coroner's finding matching that of the police all those years ago. Those who've studied the case suggest there could also be another solution to the mystery. And I think that as he was out swimming, there was this key moment when he realised that he was in danger and he had to make the choice. Do I fight back against the water or do I just surrender to the water and die? Or he might have had a heart attack and then perish. I certainly don't believe there's any conspiracy theory. I think he was just simply worn down by the pressures of the job. Harold Holt's legacy is shrouded by his untimely death. The intrigue and the fight to take his place at the lodge began even as mourners packed into St Paul's Cathedral. 
Former Liberal and founder of the Australian Democrats, Don Chip, later described the atmosphere at the memorial as sickening and described some of the mourners as unspeakable bastards. John Gorton won the post of Prime Minister after challenger Billy McMahon faced a split with coalition partners, the Country Party. But I have told Mr McMahon that neither I nor my Country Party colleagues would be prepared to serve under him as Prime Minister. The Liberal Party infighting and the mystery of his passing overshadows Holt's political achievements. There are many memorials to his life. In the Melbourne suburb of Glen Iris, a swimming centre bears his name. In far northwestern Australia, the Northwest Cape Naval Signal Station also bears the legend Harold E. Holt. It provides communications to the US Navy and the Royal Australian Naval Ships and Submarines in the Western Pacific. And in 1969, the US Navy invited Dame Zara Holt to launch its new $20 million destroyer, the USS Harold E. Holt. As the Women's Weekly recorded, it took eight blows across the bow before the champagne bottle finally broke. In our next episode, we'll delve deep into the files to uncover the dangers some of Australia's leaders have faced including the murder of two politicians, the attempted assassination of others, as well as other cases of violence and threats.